Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On February 24, 2022, the world watched with alarm as Russia invaded Ukraine. Since the start of the invasion, over 100,000 Ukrainians have died fighting to defend Ukraine's sovereignty and the broader principles of freedom and democracy. Now, it's been two years since Putin's unprovoked assault on Ukraine. We can't abandon them in their fight for freedom, not today, not tomorrow, never. With Ukraine running out of bullets and Russia advancing in Ukraine, the eyes of the world are on the United States Congress. Authoritarian regimes around the world like Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea are looking closely to see if we'll honor our commitments and stand with our democratic ally, or if we'll hand over Ukraine to Vladimir Putin. If Ukraine falls, Putin will not stop until all of Eastern Europe is within his grasp. If Congress fails to act, it'll go down as one of the greatest foreign policy failures in our nation's history. Let's be clear about where history will place the blame. If Congress fails to act, history won't be kind in the judgment that House Republicans surrendered Ukraine to Russia. In the past, House Democrats and Republicans in the U.S. Congress have united and come together in opposition to Vladimir Putin's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. We've just seen 22 Republicans in the Senate willing to vote country over party on this issue. I believe there are Republicans in the House willing to do the same. As we look ahead, House Republicans have a choice. Are they pro-democracy or are they pro-Putin? House Republicans can choose country over party or Russia over the United States. House Republicans can stand with our allies or they can stand with Donald Trump and the pro-Putin wing of the Republican conference. House Republicans can either stand with democratic nations like Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, or they can bend the knee to authoritarian regimes like Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. The longer we delay sending aid to Ukraine, the more powerful Putin and other authoritarian regimes become. We can't abandon them in their fight for freedom. That's why I'm calling on the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, to bring the bipartisan Senate passed security package to the floor of the House for an immediate vote. Now, many of my constituents rightly question the high cost of this aid package. Support for Ukraine and our allies is in our national interest. It's a national security issue for the American people. While the costs are high, we'll spend 100 times more money containing an aggressive Russia around the globe if we do nothing. We must stand with our allies. This will be a vote where members will be forced to choose between democracy and authoritarianism. As I voted now for Speaker of the House 19 times, I've learned how incredibly fragile our democracy is. We must act now to pass a supplemental aid package and stand with Ukraine. Listen, folks, we can either stand with democracies like Israel and Ukraine, or we can bend the knee to Putin and other authoritarian regimes around the globe. Democracy should never be taken for granted. We must be vigilant and proactive to protect it here and around the world. History is watching what happens next. Let's come together, not as Democrats or Republicans, but as Americans and stand with our ally, Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. The gentleman yields. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Rose, for five minutes.